imagine my schlong in this form? Well, I wish. Ah! Uh... Well, you guys wanted the Garlic Jr. deck profile, so here he is. He's Overlord on the front side. Auto, you draw a card, and he awakens a four or less life. Or if you have a uh, three cost specified unison, which in this meta, you're going to awaken at four life. This side here is Garlic the Immortal Demon, and every time it's shiny, it doesn't like to focus, but he's also Overlord once per turn. When this card attacks, you draw one, and then he has a nice little auto. When one of your opponent's cards attacks, you may choose one yellow demon clan in your hand with energy cost of two, uh, played in rest mode, if you do negate this skill. So, cool thing about him is that uh, the way it's worded with his Overlord, on your awakening turn, if you have two servant guys, you can use the Overlord on the front, awaken and then use that overlord as well too which is usually what you want to do to optimize how many cards you're drawing on your awaken turn so the first card here uh kind of the most important card in the deck to get on turn one is makio star so for those of you that have never played against garlic uh he's a field card when you activate this card you look at the top five uh, and add one yellow demon clan uh, among them to your hand and a second auto so if your leader is a yellow demon clan at the end of the turn you choose one of your yellow demon clan cards two or less and play it uh, with the skills negated so at the end of the turn you can spam out your demonic guys and uh, get jiggy with it really uh, the next card is one of the first of the spice boys uh, this is kind of I'm showing the early stuff you want to see first, because if you don't see these turn one, it's it's going to be a rough, rough time. Uh, Gas you, uh, the Demonic Elite Four, you know, that's uh, they're stealing from Pokemon now. Uh, but basically, his Activate Main lets you ditch him to the drop, and you can grab a Makio Star from your deck. We're running two Makio Stars and three of him. Honestly, you could go with four of him if you want. I was originally running uh, three Makio Stars in the deck, but... Once you get it later on, it's not horrible because you can still pay one and search your top five, but I found this ratio worked best. You may have heard me in my gameplay video of Garlic Jr. that uh, the Gaseo sucks because he makes you go minus one in hand, which makes absolutely no sense. You're ditching a card and you're grabbing another card. There you are going neutral in hand. Uh, the reason I said that is because I'm severely brain damaged. The next card here is kind of what you want to uh, go into on uh, turn two, and that is Garlic Jr. Villainous Threat. He's here because he's got an activate main limit one for one yellow energy. If you have a Makio Star, play this card from your hand. He's 20k and indestructible, so he's a nice body uh, to start you off being indestructible, only having one energy, and the only stipulation is having your Makio star out. It's really easy to consistently get him out turn two. You just need to find him. And why you want to get him out turn two is because you can instantly X-Evolve into your boss monster of the deck. So Garlic Jr., Overlord of the Dead Zone. This guy, he's, he's very powerful. Um, even in today's meta, he's still super strong. The there's just a lot of answers for him for indestructible cards, but being able to basically play him out for two energy is still really good. Uh, he's unique, indestructible, critical, uh, X evolve for one yellow energy on a garlic junior energy cost of three, bada bing. Uh, he's overlord once per turn, so there's a lot, a lot of overlord in this deck, and if you don't know what overlord does, what it does is you can choose one of your cards that have servant, place it at the bottom of your deck, and then you get to draw one card. Which does help this guy out with his activate main, because if my leader's a yellow demon clan, I look at the bottom card of my deck. If it's a yellow demon clan with an energy cost of two or less, I may play it, otherwise return the card to the bottom of my deck. So I can servant a card that I already had to the bottom of my deck, and then play that same card back out and swing with it again. Which a lot of them will have effects on play, so you might be able to get an additional draw or additional top five. So it's super important to get him out as quickly as possible. So the card you want to grab here is the master Roshi demonic vassal uh so i only have him at two copies because i only ended up getting two copies uh it's a new uh tournament pack i believe from the last uh zenkai tournaments uh packs but he is super good and i would recommend running him at at least three probably even four uh he's servant so the whole whole point of this deck and uh, he's got an auto if my leader is a yellow demon clan card look at the top five cards in my deck and add one yellow demon clan to my hand he's only a 9k but the servant boosts him up to 10k and for those of you that don't know what servant is basically it gives the battle card plus 10k but it cannot restand on your charge phase 
So basically he gets one attack, or if he gets played in rest mode, he's only going to stay in rest mode unless you find a way to play him out again. But his activate main limit one is also really good. Uh, if my leader is a yellow demon clan card, uh, Machio Star is in my battle area, and I place one card from my hand at the bottom of my deck, I can play this card from my hand in rest mode. So I don't even need to worry about uh, waiting till the end of the turn. I can get him right on the field and start doing my shenanigans with Servant, drawing a bunch of cards, looking top five with him as well too. The really good thing about him is even if I play him in rest mode with that effect, I can bottom deck him with uh, the Servant on this Garlic Jr. or my leader, and then I can pull him back out with the activate main of this Garlic Jr. He gets his effect again, and he's gonna be in active mode, so I can swing for 19k, and then overload him again with either this guy or the leader, because both of those overlords are still available to me. And if it's my awakening turn, I can go nuts with another overlord on a different servant card I had. So he is super, super good for the deck. The original Roshi in this deck, I'm still running at three. I think if I had this guy at three or four, I'd probably knock him down to two. He is still really good. He is 10k servant, so he's a 20k swing. Uh, his auto, if my leader's a demon claim card, I get to draw one card, but I can't use autos on copies of this card for the turn. So basically this is an old version of saying that auto's limit one, uh, which is why this Roshi is better because he doesn't have a limit one on his auto, only on his activate main. So this guy is still super good. I'm still drawing when he's played at least once per turn and I can still swing 20k at least twice if I'm bringing him back from the bottom of my deck. Now to go on more of the minions, the next one up is Yamcha Demonic Transformation. So very simple, 10k blocker servant. So he's a 20k blocker that you can use once Unless we might have some other cards that can restand him later on, but he is just your classic blocker. He, a lot of these cards don't stay on the field very long, so you can't rely on them to be a blocker because blowing up two costs is really easy in this game. And the final of these servant cards is the good old Chi Chi Demonic Transformation. So this was also a promo card, and then this, she's also servant. And then her auto is when this card is played, choose one of your opponent's battle cards or unison cards and switch it to rest mode. So this does work on the offensive if you're looking to just tap a blocker down or something. But the best use of this is with your leader's auto. So if you know that they're swinging with their leader or something and they got a really powerful unison, say boo unison or anything that's going to swing double strike or anything that you're just like, oh my god, I'm really scared of that card. You can use the auto on your leader to play on rest mode, and that auto will trigger because it does not negate the skills on play. So you're still getting her down and uh, stopping potentially a lethal uh, unison or battle card uh, just from them attacking you. So to get another member of the Spice Boys here, we are playing uh, Tardo. Excuse you? Like mustard! Come on, guys! Please don't make a big deal out of this! It's cultural, okay? <sighs> I shorten vinegar all the time, but you don't hear me calling myself- Okay, relax. When this card is played, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and it can't be switched to active mode during your opponent's next turn. Auto, one yellow energy. This is how he's played. Uh, is if your leader is a yellow demon clan and you activate overlord skill, you can play him. So basically, Anytime you do your little shenanigans overloading a, a card to the bottom of your deck, you're able to play this guy and lock out one of their powerhouse battle cards for the turn. Obviously, it doesn't go through barrier, but there's a lot of boss monsters that only have deflect or stuff like that, and you can lock them out, and it's he's a super good card. I was sleeping on him before. I only had him at two, but I feel four might be overkill. I'd say minimum three of this card because he does help you in a lot of matches where they can spam out early aggression. The next card, the last of the Demonic Transformations, he doesn't have Servant, but I'm running one of uh, Piccolo Demonic Transformation. He's a counterplay. If my leader is mono yellow, play this card, and then the card being played with an energy cost 4 less is played with skills negated. It doesn't say anything about battle card. So this can hit unisons where they become skillless for the turn, which is really good when they have a big boss unison, say Free Golden Frieza or Majin Buu. He can slow them down for a turn. Going into more tech cards, we got uh, Zarbon, the Emperor's Attendant. So, a lot of you that are newer to the game will probably have no clue what this card is. But, um, you're just like, what the hell is Zarbon, the beautiful man, doing here with all these, uh, these, <laughs> these Earthlings? Come on. But, uh, basically, uh, during your opponent's turn, when you combo with this card, choose to one of your battle cards, switch it to active mode. So, what's the main problem of this deck? There, okay, there's a lot. Don't get me wrong. But... Servant, you're locked out from restanding on your charge phase. 
This allows you to restand on your opponent's turn. So basically, Yamcha be can become a dual blocker. And uh, you can just go to town having a 20k dual blocker if they don't pop him, which happens very often. But you can do this with any of the cards here, even if you want to just restand them to combo them. And then that turns your dead card that you can't combo into 5k from him, 5k from the combo piece, which has helped me uh, survive a lot of matches. Next one up here is another tech card. This is the original Garlic Jr. that would go into the boss monster. He is way too slow now, but I'm bringing him in for a different effect. So he's Deflect Indestructible. The cool thing about him is his auto though. So when this card is played, I can activate this skill. During my opponent's next card, my leader card and unison cards do not take damage from double or triple strike. So all you Sin Shenrons with your double strike four drop, your triple strike uh, boss monster, they, they don't even do damage. Not that they, they can't do double strike or triple strike, they don't do damage at all to my leader or unison card. So that's super cool. Then again, since Shenron is kind of kryptonite for this deck because he can minus right through indestructible, which uh, you do not have a fun time playing against that deck. Another tech card here, a one of, which we you might be wondering why there's a lot of one ofs in this deck. You go through your deck pretty quick when you're overlording, drawing, and keeping stuff at the bottom of your deck. It's not there's not a whole lot of shuffling here, so you kind of see your whole deck. And this guy here is the Kryptonite for blue decks, uh, especially. Uh, deflect Barrier Unique, and then if my leader is yellow, your opponent can't activate extra cards unless they switch one of their energy to rest mode. And that is every time, so you do not do not get any free counters. You don't, Everything has attacks, and that's an extra energy. So it's really good against all colors, but especially blue, because blue is not allowed to use Dimension Magic if they have no energy. They can't do their Sparking Take a Life. They need to rest an energy just to even do that version of uh, Dimension Magic's effect. Another one of, of course, Swift Retaliation Cooler. Um, cards busted. Counter, counter, three energy. Uh, you stop any counter in the game uh, unless 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 it's one of those special can't be negated which nobody seems to be running because they are very situational uh they i, I think they're still really good side deck cards but yeah he uh, also gets to draw a card on play possibly too if you have enough cards in rest mode but yeah he is uh super good in any yellow deck and for the super combo of the deck we're gonna go with krillin moments before comeback uh, you know, garlic's in the picture, so, like, why not? Uh, I wish that this was also considered, like, a Garlic Jr. card or something, or a Demon Clan, so I can search up uh, from top five from all my cards here. But, you know, it couldn't be that good. There is a super combo that you can use from the deck. It's the fourth Spice Boy. I'm o I know I'm only running two, but... Um the main reason we're running Krillin is obviously you get a bottom deck one draw two. But in this deck, bottom decking one, I can set up my servant cards that I can grab with Garlic Jr. So that is the main reason that we have that instead of the super combo that we can search. Which I'm very big on. If the deck has its own super combo that's searchable, you probably should go for that because it's usually really strong to be able to just search your super combos off of top five effects. Now getting into our counters... I know it's not really used for its counterattack, but you can. Uh, Power of a Super Saiyan, it's a one of. Uh, you can't have any more. Might as well run the one. Uh, so you can either negate the attack for one energy, or if you have one mono yellow energy open, you get a draw card and switch one of your opponent's battle cards or unisons to rest mode. So super, super strong. Very similar to, to Chi Chi, but we don't need a waste in auto there, and you also get a draw card off it. So super, super good. Next up. We have our uh, baby hatch jack of the deck, which ha did save me in the gameplay uh, video. If you haven't watched that, the link will description. But uh, energy field, counterattack, negate the attack, and you can't activate copies of this card for the turn. If you have four or more yellow demon clan cards in play, your opponent can only attack once more for the turn. And permanent, if you have four or more yellow demon clan cards in play, uh, you can activate this card from your hand without paying its energy costs. You're like, why isn't this at four? The problem with this deck is the only two cards I can guarantee are going to be on the field are these two. I guess if I had that, I can guarantee three for the most part. Obviously, you can get through Indestructible by either blanking its skills or minusing it down. But it's very hard to keep these guys out before using the energy field. Of course, when your opponent swings, you can auto and play a uh, battle card so you can get your four there the problem with that being is you have to let one attack through so there you get a negate an attack after that and you still get to let another attack through after that so only at two it can save your life in the matchups where you can keep an actual field going next counter over here very straightforward freezes army reinforcements 
got two of them, you're probably going to see two every game unless they're in, like, your last life. But take a life, spawn a blocker at uh, five or less. Super, super good. Uh, the next up, Release from Evil. So we are running Unisons in this deck, so Release from Evil is going to be free uh, when you play it, because all you need is a Unison out. And then if my leader's mono yellow, and uh, I basically choose the attacking card, ignoring barrier, and then I blank its skills and it can't switch to active. So very good against dual attack cards, very good against leaders, uh, If like especially Gamma. If Gamma's swinging on you, and you do this, they can't do their end of the turn auto. So this is super, super strong on uh, cards like that. Finally, last counter card here is going to be Mecha Frieza, Robotic Repost. Only running two of them. He can be counterplayed, but we do run enough extra cards in this deck where you are going to be able to play him for one and basically floodgate your opponent for the turn. Uh, basically what he does is when this card is played from your hand, each time your opponent would attack with a non-unison card, they must choose one card and uh, one of their cards and switch it to rest mode. So that's any card that doesn't have barriers. So if they got a board full of barrier, you are stopping them completely, which there are a lot of other yellow decks that have a lot of barrier, like Ape Ku, uh, Trunks Jita, that, that slows them right the hell down. God, there's so many cards in this deck that are one ofs that we're taking up way too much space. So I'm basically gonna put the leader down here because it doesn't really matter if I cover the leader up. The next uh, thing we're going into is the Unisons. We are running three of uh, SS Gogeta Dynamic Unison. And you're going to say, what the hell is this card? Uh, I didn't play set 10. He is pretty cool. The reason why I'm running this one, uh, mainly because I have the SPRs and I finally had a reason to play them. Not a good reason, but I had a reason. The biggest uh, draw to him is his permanent. If all of your energy is in rest mode, uh, your mono leader gets plus 5k during your opponent's turn. So it's just another defensive tool in the deck uh, where this deck, you kind of really want to go aggressive. And... Um, he, he gives you that. Another thing is, is plus one is you can choose two yellow cards in your hand, discard them, and draw two cards. So another reason why there's a lot of one ofs is I can see most cards in my deck purely from this card alone too. Uh, during my opponent's next charge phase, uh, he can minus four, and your opponent can only switch two energy to active mode. So if your opponent tapped out completely against you, and you got four markers on this bad boy, you can just minus four, and they are not really doing much on their crackback. The cool thing about him is he also gains a marker when my opponent activates an extra card once per turn. So on either turn, he's activating an extra card, I can get a marker. The main reason that I do have him is for that permanent though, where if I'm completely tapped out, which happens a lot in this deck, I at least have another kind of sense of being on my leader. So the final unisons in this deck would be the SS2 Sun Gohan Z Fighter. So it is a specified cost three unison, unlike the Gogeta, it's only specified cost two. So this can actually awaken my leader but I'm mainly using this uh, for my kill turn. He's in power yellow three and he's blocker. Uh, so auto, when he's played, I get to check how many unisons are in the drop and I can KO that many cards in rest mode ignoring barrier if I have four more markers when he's played. Uh, and then his plus one is just drawing a card. And then his minus three is where stuff gets nutty. He gives 5k to my leader, gives himself 5k and triple attack. And, but that's only with his minus three. So you usually have to either tap four for him or play him on top of a unison and get his empower effect. But he's super, super good. And I try to put him in almost every yellow deck I can, even with that new art there. Look beautiful, beautiful. Now onto our overall of the deck. We are running one mirror creator absorbed. Uh, I was running two originally. This is a 54 card list. I found that I was finding both of them all the time at the wrong time. And I'd clog my hand because he is a... 1 plus 10k combo, so he can clog your hand, especially with a deck that I can't guarantee I'm going to have an energy up. Uh, but he's super good, just because he uh, gets all he gets 5k for each card in my warp, and uh, especially if I'm using that Gogeta early on, I'm discarding two cards there, I'm building up a giant warp anyway from comboing a lot of stuff. Yeah, he's super, super good, and the reason we're running him is because of a certain Z card that everyone loves to pair him with. But for our secret rare, keeping it simple and clean, Super 17 Sibling Absorbed. So you could also run Piccolo, Gohan. I don't have Piccolo, Gohan. This uh, secret rare is way cheaper anyway. And it's a really uh, cool effect. Deflect Critical Ultimate. Uh, counterplay. Play this card, then choose one of your opponent's uh, cards in rest mode, ignoring barrier, and place it under this card. Then the card being played has its skills negated for the turn. So if anybody's familiar with Cold Bloodlust, it has that effect and eats a card ignoring barrier. The only problem with that effect is that if the card that you want to absorb has deflect, 
you can't because all the skill text is part of the counterplay. So even though it's not the card being played, it still can't be touched by counterplay effects. So even if it just had deflected no barrier, I can't eat it. But uh, doesn't really matter. I'm negating the card coming in and I'm getting a 40k crit, which is super, super good. I had to move the mat over to the side here. So hopefully you can still see Yamcha and understand what the hell's going on. But just to fit the Z battle cards here uh, is going to be a task from how sloppy this deck is. But we're going to go with two Oolongs. Uh, greed is good. Activate main. You get to choose a battle card ignoring barrier and gain its power. We're going to gain Mirror's power. If they got an SCR, we can gain that or we can gain our own SCR's power. But mostly it's going to be Mirror because Mirror can go all the way up to past 100k. And then Oolong just, oh, another swing of 100k. You don't have a negate? Good luck. Uh, next one, we got a one of of Gamma executing uh, Justice. Sorry, Gamma 2. Let's not, we can't we can't uh, go crazy with it. The reason we have Gamma in this deck, you're like, oh yeah, pop a Villainous card, get Double Strike. Yeah, yeah, sure. The thing that's crazy about him is actually his Activate Main. It's Limit 1, and you get to place one card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. And until the end of your opponent's next turn, anytime they activate a counter... Or they activate Villainous, which, good one. Uh, you get a draw card each time. So that's that's what he's in the deck for. Another one-drop yellow card we have is uh, Krillin Trusty Assistance. He's just a one-drop blocker you can grab from anywhere. He's just in there because I'm not really running the whole Gohan SH chain, so I got extra room in here. The final yellow Z cards uh, are the SSB Sengoku Evolved Defender. I just put two of them just to fill out space. I haven't really been able to play him in this deck. I think he's super good when he comes out. It's just you have to already have gone pretty far in the game for him to be super effective. It's just because if I tap three out for this guy on turn three, I'm kind of not doing too much. I'd much rather have a unison or something else to kind of further my aggression in this deck, which is the main way you're winning is spamming out all these guys on your turn, swinging, swinging, overlording, putting them to the bottom, and then going nuts. And the final card, SSB Vegeta surmounting the impossible. So he is uh, just your way to awaken. If you got extra room in your Z deck, just throw him in just in case if you need an uh, alternate to your awaken. Like I said, I can either awaken with a unison or awaken at four life. And if someone's trying to keep me at five life, play it a Vegeta. Why not? I get to draw two cards and then have my chance to go down to four life. There's the deck list. If you ever want to watch me play any of these goofy decks live, I'm live Tuesdays and Thursdays twitch.tv slash cards. We always try to bring a different deck to tournaments just to see how they uh, stack against the meta, usually poorly. So make sure to hop on the stream and watch my goofy decks get dunked on.